Today we are discovering what secrets Survivor 43 did not tell us in the edited TV show. Some of these are game related, some are strategic, and some are just plain silly. Basically, as long as it isn't part of the show that aired on TV, it's fair game to be considered a secret. And while most of the secrets here are focused on Survivor 43, some of them do apply to Survivor as a whole. Heads up, this list contains secrets that I personally found to be the most interesting. Not every single secret in existence about the season is in this video. So with that, let's count all 43 of them in absolutely no particular order. Number one. Do you remember San Juan del Sur and the challenge that destroyed Missy's ankle? If not, then I guess I just reminded you. What is important to note is that when we go to the finale of that season, Jeff talks to a little kid who actually designed the challenge, and after knowing it destroyed Missy's ankle, he says this. I just wanted to help the show. You're welcome. <laughs> That is why I love you! Why is this relevant to season 43? Because Survivor hired this guy to be on their dream team. Alright, it is the official rehearsal Survivor 43 for the challenge that our dream teamer, Austin Russell, created back when the dream team. Go! I like my design because it's difficult in different ways. This is hard because you're trying to be very agile, very small, try to move through very small areas. This is hard because you want to go very fast. We're tied together. The seesaw is by far the most dangerous thing on this. Hard for just about everyone. You're good, Coco. Head over the gate. A balance challenge. It's one of a kind. The very first design I made in stop motion, it was just the hurdles, the bucket with water, and then going over the seesaw to fill up just a uh, something just like a water trough Whoa. or some sort of other object. All right, I want to introduce you to somebody. Austin, where's Austin Russell? Designer, there he is, okay. Awesome. I thought it was really awesome meeting Austin and the fact that Survivor has such a big heart and now em employing him, I think you guys found gold in him. So from make a wish to an actual Survivor crew member, we're running his challenge, you're gonna run it. Right. Number two. In this new era of Survivor, it has been plenty hyped up how the players losing their flint is a massive deal. So massive that we have never actually seen any real consequences to this in any of the three seasons they have implemented this rule so far. Well, that's because it's being hidden in the secret scenes. What's the score? Is it out? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We were very lucky to have it as long as we had it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the first time I got up, I put the wood on it. Yeah, I heard you doing that. That was smart. <sighs> yeah, ah, that's there. frustrating. Mm -hmm. The fire at the Baca camp is officially done, and it's it's really upsetting. It's really, really a bummer. Losing the flint at the last challenge has been a big detriment, more so than I thought, because I'll tell you, that toasted coconut's a lot better than eating it raw. Number three, come on in, guys. I know it was season 41 when the word guys was banned from Jeff's mouth, as some commenters haven't moved on from this since it happened, but Jeff has not publicly spoken on this matter until now. You know, people have criticized, like, we're too woke. Like, you should never do that. And I said, well, I don't know, I have two kids. I have a boy and a girl. Mm -hmm. And had I said 20 years ago, come on in, ladies, Everybody would have thought that was weird. I want my daughter to know if you think that's a weird word yeah. gender wise, then I got you. I, I don't want to be that guy, mm -hmm. that person, mm -hmm. that guy. <laughs> but what somebody pointed out to me was the mistake I made was I made it, I made it a moment. And in that way, I made it about me. And he, and he said, you know, if you just didn't want to do it, stop doing it. We were in my defense. It was so top of mind. Everything, mm -hmm. our language, how we were treating each other. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, unconscious bias, which I'm still trying to learn about my own. Yeah. So I was really concerned that yeah. I don't want, this is my one opportunity. We've been off the air, COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So I made that decision. If I could do it again, I would do what this guy suggested. And he's a big movie producer, a very smart guy, and I would have just done it and said, this was for me. Yeah. And yeah. I don't have to explain it. I personally think that what Jeff learned is the right call. You can make tweaks to how you speak, but 
putting this change on display as some sort of show is just asking for criticism. By the way, thank you for watching Once Upon an Island. Liking and subscribing really helps. And if you want to pick what videos I make and watch all of my videos weeks and even months early, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. If that interests you, then check out the link in the description. Thank you for your support. Number four, Ponderosa is dead. Not Ponderosa itself, but the videos for it died sometime between season 41 and 42 because the crew that filmed the 41 Ponderosas flew out before 42 even began filming. Now, back when I made the 42 Secrets video, I held some hope that they would return, but since that video, I found out a lot of information. Basically, it ain't happening. In a Reddit comment from Dwight, he states that this change allows the whole cast to have videos and not just the jurors. But I call crap on that reason. Not to Dwight, he's just the messenger. He didn't make this decision. But to whoever said that is the reason. It is clearly a money decision, which is fine, but the phone videos they made to replace proper Ponderosa videos are nowhere near the same level, and I didn't find a single one worth watching. Number five. Okay, so I had a mini rant back in the last secret. I'm sorry, I'll attempt to compose myself. So if you have watched any of the secrets videos I made covering seasons 16 through 41, you will have no doubt seen a Ponderosa video in some shape or form. Some of these full Ponderosa videos are on YouTube, but the place I got them all are on the DVDs. For some reason, they're not on any streaming service as of the time of this video. Anyways, here are a couple of the new videos that replace these. Hey everybody, it's Gabler here at Ponderosa. Good morning to your morning. Uh, got back in last night. I don't know, we had a, an after party and everybody was crazy cool, had so much fun. And then uh, one last boat ride back to here. Uh, the, the chefs had some kind of amazing Asian noodle stir fry for me. Uh, had a couple cocktails with all of our, uh, our, our merge mates and we just laughed until about 4.30 in the morning. Anyways, everybody, take good care. Love you and appreciate all the support and uh, whatever. But rock and roll, life is short, life is now, live it. I'm here at Ponderosa after being voted out uh, number six, trying to get over my heartbreak with brother Jesse. Uh, we out here having a good old time. It's, uh, it's nice to come out here with the refuge of swimming pools and uh, people that we played the game with, eating a whole hell of a lot, enjoying the pool, getting massages, just living, you know, as they say, L-I-V-I-N. Number six, Gabler and his winners that it was hiding in plain sight this whole time. I am serious, watch my video on his win, it was right there. Anyways, in this secret scene from around the time of episode five, we see Gabler annoy Sammy, who by the way is only 19, with being so slow. You know, so I woke up today and I decided, let's go try line fishing. It takes us four hours to get out and do a fishing expedition that's probably gonna end up lasting 20 to 30 minutes and might not even end with a single fish. I'll definitely go out today, 100%. Just gotta, just gonna rest a little bit, just like for a challenge, I'm gonna rest up for this thing. If you wanna do something, you better tell them two and a half to three hours before because that's how long it's gonna take them to get going. Millennials, there's a lot of decision making and discussion going into every step of the procedures. I think, I think only two of us should go. The raft will move faster. It'll be easier with two. It'll be easier with two. Okay. I mean, well, what's she gonna do? I would love to be helpful if I could. If you don't think I'll be helpful, I will stay back and scrub some laundry. I think uh, I think it's just two for now. It took a lot of energy to get us out the door, but you know the food's in the ocean. We got to go out and give it a try. Oh, those are some big waves. Yeah. Oh, a third person could help. A little bit into the water, I realized the mistake that I've made by getting out on the boat with this old man stranded by myself. Got him! Got him, little guy. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, Gabler got a fish. Number seven. Speaking of Gabler annoying people, but it being cut from the actual show as not to tarnish the winner at it, in this other secret scene, Gabler annoys Owen. Keep in mind, this is all the pre-merge when he was kind of a mess. We get back to camp and I'm about to apologize for losing my cool a little bit. I snapped at Gabler and Ellie once or twice during the challenge. Heat of the moment stuff. We're competitive people. We've talked about this as a tribe already. But before Sammy and I could say anything, Gabler launches in to this diatribe, could be a fair word, about how we need to come together. He's been in the operating room 
we can't talk to each other like that. We really need to move forward as a team and be cohesive. I know we can do better. It's like, we're all adults here. We can have a conversation, but when it turns into a lecture, it's not necessarily what I'm here for. Number eight. Did you know Survivor has a winner's edit? It varies from season to season, but the concept is always there. Every season, they leave hints and clues along the way as to who will win. Sometimes it's so obvious. And other times they sneak one past us that we only recognize in retrospect. I made a video called How Survivor Secretly Spoils Their Own Winners if you are interested in the subject. Anyways, Jeff during Survivor 43 says, there is no such thing as a winner's edit. But the biggest thing I hear is the winner's edit. That's the one that gets me. Right. Oh, he's getting the winner's edit. Right. She's getting the winner's edit. I'm here to tell you, there is no such thing as winner's edit. Yeah. There's nobody in our team that would say, well, perhaps we do have a winner's head. Right, right. Well, if Jeff says it, then it must be true. Us fans, we're just crazy. But I want to present another piece of evidence. Here's Jeff circa season 29 on the same subject. On Survivor, we build the world. It's an island. And then you show us what you're going to do. And we come back and write it then. So it's this fantastic sort of reverse engineering mystery that we're writing that starts on day 39. And he goes back to day one and says, now we're gonna take you on this journey. And there are clues all along the way about who's gonna win this game. Number nine, a lot of people, myself included, thought going into final three that Cassidy was going to win. However, if she were going to win, I don't think this very positive scene about her would have been left out of the show proper. Breathing is a really good technique for just immediate calming of your nervous system and taking that time to tap into it and be conscious with your breath. It really just brings you back to center and it just helps to like ground your energy and allow your intuition to speak to you because when your ego is too all over the place like you can't hear that internal guidance that wisdom that you have so you have to find those moments of quiet to be able to find that clarity number 10 in cassie's exit interview she is baffled as to how she lost and i appreciate the honesty i get what she's feeling to a degree but having seven months to process it along with seeing how gabler's story was told combined with this unaired conversation with jesse kind of says it all. The conversation that I had with Jesse about the fire making, like he had told me, I don't think this made the cut, but he told me, um, if you don't take me out in fire, I'm not voting for you. I'm gonna vote for, for Gabler or whatever. And I was like, and I remember like being offended. I was like, I don't understand why you're threatening me with that. Like, is it because I'm a woman? Like he got all offended by that. But it was like, at the time it just felt like every, all these people were attacking me and saying like, I'm not gonna vote for you if you vote me out. Like, is it like, and it, to me, it was like, that's unfair to tell me like, you're gonna base your entire um, decision off of like the fire making challenge. And that the fact that like, I didn't step up, even though I earned my spot in final three, it just felt so ridiculous that they, that was like a criteria for them that I needed to, to achieve, to be a, a valid winner in their eyes. Because when your ego is too all over the place, like you can't hear that internal guidance, that wisdom that you have. Number 11, there are many things we miss about the Survivor of old. Ponderosa videos, different locations, the auction. I am hoping the family visit doesn't go away, but I think it is next as it hasn't happened in three seasons. So it hurts when Survivor was promoting this during the season with this ad. This game is and always has been about relationships. This is the reason why I'm playing. Cheers to our brotherhood. It was a magical moment. It was amazing having my kids here. They got to come out here and experience what we've been doing for almost 20 years. This is so beautiful to watch. Number 12, remember how I said the fan base misses the Survivor auction? Well, well, well. That last ad about the families may have not stung too hard. After all, not all of us care about the family visit. But this one about the auction, slap me in the face and call me grandma. I'm gonna show you this one. Massive ribs and a cold beer. Fried chicken, mac and cheese, brown. Enough said that tangy barbecue just immaculate all in my mouth. Oh my god! Pizza. Oh, yeah. You get the good stuff. Go for it. Sushi. 
That's how you do it. Yeah. Number 13. Do you like all the new twists the show throws at us? Do you want a back to basic seasons? Or are you like me and just wish the twists were still there, but just lessened? Either way, screw you, dude. I've been trying to scream from the top of rooftops at today's players who get frustrated with all the twists. It's almost like I'm a parent saying, I'm going to, that which you resist will persist. I'm going to push more and more until you realize this is not what the game's about. Mm. The game is about adaptation. Mm -hmm. Survivor, you wake up, you find a beware advantage. Do you open it or not? Yeah. Beware. Mm -hmm. Also, nod to future players. Beware advantages are not going away and they're not going to get less scary. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like you do need that. Number 14. We have seen our fair share of Jeff Probst on Matt TV, which is kind of like Saturday Night Live. Oh, and speaking of Saturday Night Live, this was during Survivor 43. And Dooney, no matter come hell or high water, I'm going to love you till I got no more love to give. I swear that to you. I don't know, I feel like marrying you no more on account of your best man came to our wedding dressed like Joker. <laughs> you don't like me dressed like Joker? But I'll be damned if you don't look exactly like Joker! Gamma Judy, have you made your decision? I have. Clint gets to be Joker. Congratulations, Clint. You get to be Joker. Woo! Jeff Probst said I get to be Joker! Let's go, boy! You're here to outwit, outplay, and outlast, and the only way out of here is a medical helicopter. You got it? Good luck. I'm gonna have to run this by my agent. Did you say medical helicopter? I missed the first part. What happened? <laughs> Number 15. Before Cody was voted off, he was certain that Carla was a goner. What do I mean by that? Well, in this secret scene before he gets voted off. Want to help me look for a stick for Carla? A walking stick? <laughs> sure. She needs a nice one. Yeah, she does. Walking stick. Kind of <laughs> I'm making Carla a walking stick, not because I'm a, I'm a facetious a hole. Like, she hurt her ankle. So. I went and got her walking stick and I figured, what the hell, I'm gonna make her a beautiful walking stick, I'm gonna put living on, on there, which is what's tattooed on my butt cheek so she has a little memory. This is gonna be awesome. I'm afraid, I I'm gonna have to, I hope we don't sit by each other at Tribal because this walking stick that I'm making, she's gonna beat me with it on her way out, bro. Like, she's gonna beat me with it. 13th person voted out of Survivor 43. Cody. Cody, Tribe spoken. Terrified. Like, thank God she's got a beat up ankle so that way I can run from her. Always, I want to get beat up by the damn walking stick that I've made for her. Number 16, preposterous. I had to use spell check just to make sure I had that right when I typed it out. But Cody, this is a man who laughs in the face of spell check. I got no shame. <laughs> nah, bro. That might be the longest word in my vocabulary. Correction, that I is forgot. the longest word in my vocabulary. I forgot about that until you said it. Bro gotta be right. Hey Owen, how, do, how would you guess you spell preposterous? Uh, E-R-E-P. But I got E, I got Owen said E. Pro, pro preposterous. Pro, pro preposterous, right? Not pre preposterous. 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 Yeah, you're probably right actually. I'm gonna put the O because then if someone, yeah. if they challenge it, I'll say because, uh, you know, we're, pro, we're pro. propelling the boat. Yeah. Okay, I'm sending it. That is a work of art. Number 17. How did the jury decide who's going to win? Seven to one is a landslide, and we have seen that same exact vote count in seasons 41, 42, and 43 for the winners. So what is going on that it's almost unanimous every time? We literally sat down at a table and we said, let us go through each person's game. When I got out, that's what we did. And kind of the one person that, that confirmed all of that was Jesse. When he came back, everyone literally was like, Okay, this is what we think happened. Can you confirm it? Because you had the best eyes in the game. You made all the moves. Let's talk about it. Um, so that's what it was. I uh, ask everyone. Number 18. Why did James vote for Cassidy? Well, I have two secrets in this video where the Survivor social media team put up videos that basically say who these people are going to vote for at Final Tribal. We just didn't pay attention to them. And you better believe for 44, I'm going to be paying attention. But the person I probably will kick it with the most after the game will probably be Cassidy. 
Um, I feel like we built a really good bond at Coco. So I had to choose one person that I know I'm gonna be friends with for the rest of my life. It's gonna be Cassidy. Number 19. Do you know those super cool slow motion shots that Survivor loves to do with the logo for the season? Believe it or not, it's all practical. No CG as seen in this short behind the scenes video. Number 20, if you've never heard of Cameo, it's a website where you can hire people to make videos on their phone for you. Personal or business, it doesn't matter, it just changes the price of the video. As long as you got the dough, they'll make a video for you. After some super in-depth research that took me months to do, I think I figured out that CBS paid $2,500 for this ad. Hey guys, it's your old friend, Boston Rob. I'm back on the island. I'm so excited. Survivor is back. Shall we get into it? Wednesday with the two hour season premiere. And then on Friday, catch me on Secret Celebrity Renovation. <laughs> it's awesome to be able to give back to the people who made all the difference in your life. Created in my sphere for a sledgehammer. You don't want to miss it. Number 21, Ozzy is the gold standard for fishermen in Survivor. After he caught a fish with his bare hands in Micronesia, he depleted the entire South Pacific during season 23. You almost can't get a scene about someone fishing without at least mentioning Ozzy. Case in point. You got it! Oh my God. It's tiny, but it's, it's, it's finally hit something. I'm so proud yeah, of you. That's a good idea. Thank you. Oh my God, so Owen. To go out there and spear a few fish today, I felt so good. Like I've been watching Survivor since I was a little kid and I used to watch Ozzy out there spear fishing, root bird and you know, everything. And I always said I wanted to do that and to accomplish it and to be able to eat some fish today, I feel like a new man. Number 22. We saw a brief glimpse of this during the season, but in this secret scene from around the time of episode three, we get a lot more in depth with James on his birthday and what it means to him. I wish my mom was here. That's my baby. For me personally, my birthday is a weird time because it's always my birthday and then Mother's Day. I lost my mom five years ago. I literally found out she had stage four breast cancer six months before she passed. I feel like she would have been the biggest Survivor fan in the world. I've done pretty well, and it would have been good to be sitting there to see my mom's reaction. And that kind of like plays with my head a little bit. I believe she is out there rooting for me, trying to pull strings, trying to put idols in my pockets if she could. So I'm looking for signs and I'm just really following my intuition. Number 23, if you all watch college football, more specifically the SEC championship, then you may have noticed a familiar face doing the hype video for that game this year. Take it from me. There is no better reality television than college football. And when the stakes are this high, the game of the year is at hand. Whether you're alone on a deserted island or in a stadium playing in front of thousands of screaming fans, the name of the game is survival. The LSU Tigers from the West. Go Tigers. And the Georgia Bulldogs from the East. Go Dogs. Number 24, come the merge Ellie, one of my personal favorite players this season, was voted out due to a combination of Gabler and her own poor play, which makes this secret scene of Ryan at the merge with Ellie's commentary all the more funny. Is Ryan out there right now working on something? Is he always working on something? Ryan's always working on something. I'm gonna come. I like you. You be my boyfriend. You wanna get this? I think Ryan's helping us and simultaneously hurting his own game because we know as survivor lovers that you don't isolate yourself at a merge or a mergatory or whatever this is, and he willingly did so. And that's not the kind of approach you want. You want some people around you so that it doesn't look like you're off by yourself. Everybody had eyebrows raised as he was down there, but as soon as we get down and we all lay under this silly little wall, we're like, whoa, this really worked. Number 25, how did Carla make her beat idol for the Beware Advantage and no one figured it out aside from Cassidy, who she told? Well, in the secret scene at the merge, she had a strategy to cover this up. How can I help you? Tell me, how can I help you again? Well, I, I think that's what I'm trying to figure out is like, what's the next move? I'm also very interested to think what, or get your take on like, um, do you think that Janine still has something? Then she has something like that that she took with her. Yeah, I think if they get that bead from every member of the tribe, yeah. it activates the immunity bracelet. Shut up. I swear. And uh, that's what Janine has, because I gave her the last bead. 
Number 26, Jesse was by far the player robbed this season. Though to be fair, knowing how to make fire on Survivor, especially if you plan on winning the game because at Final Four you have a 50-50 shot of having to make fire, is something you need to prepare for. This isn't news. As it turns out, he was supposed to be on a prior season of the show. You know, I was cast originally to be on 41 pre-COVID mm -hmm. and I was like, about to fly out, I had my uh, you know bags packed, everything was good to go, and then uh, COVID hit, it shut down, production paused, and I just kind of was getting um, told to, you know, we'll start soon, we'll start soon. Eventually, it was like, okay, you're gonna go through the casting process again. Um, by the time they were ready to film, I was in sort of, uh, I had stuff going on in my life that I was not, I was not ready to go out and play yet, so we hit pause on that, and then they eventually called me back when it was time for 43, Number 27, speaking of Jesse, let's ask the real questions. How the heck did he trick Cody to get the idol back from him? The show basically doesn't explain this at all. So here's what Cody had to say, followed by Jesse's point of view. Jesse mentioned to me, he said, hey, I think she has a knowledge of power. Okay. And I, and I thought about it and she kept pressing me. So unknowingly, the two of them were like having this plan that they didn't, it, it, Carla was feeding Jesse's plan and she didn't even know it. So Jesse never even asked for the idol back. I gave it back to him because of that. He didn't ask for it. Carla had, you know, kept asking me to see it and want it. And at that point I was like, well, who do I trust? Do I trust Carla or do I trust Jesse? Well, obviously Jesse, I've been playing a game with him for 21 days. Cause he actually took it back right before we went on our walk to mm -hmm. go to go give a confessional. He literally, I get called to do my confessional and Cody runs up behind me. He's like, hey man, I, I think I need the idol back. And I'm like, why do you need the idol? He's like, I just need to show Carla. I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't hesitate because mm -hmm. if I hesitate, right. then he's gonna know something's up, something's afoot. Like, and so I was like, yeah, man, here you go. I don't know, man, like knowledge is power came back twice. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's already come back and like, you never know what she has. Like, it seems weird that she's so, wants you to pull out the idol at tribal. Like, why does she want to know you have it at tribal? Cause mm -hmm. they had been talking about pulling their idols out at tribal and yep, flashing yep. them around. And then Cody walks up and he's like, where's your bag? And I'm like, Oh, it's right there. And I had opened it. I had made sure it was wide open mm -hmm. and he drops it in and I'm like, Oh, okay. Number 28, Ryan, love him or hate him. He had one strategy, catch people, Food. I can't knock him too hard as it isn't a winning game, but it helped to make it further than Ellie. I know everybody's about to go off and talk, and I know the first hour's a lot of pandemonium, so I'm gonna go fist for you guys. Trust me, I'll be back. Within five minutes, I come back with a clam that weighs about 45 pounds. Oh, hey guys! Oh! Already! Damn! I just got in. I like providing. I like seeing people's smile. The better people are feeling, the happier people are around me, the better the game's gonna go my way and the experience is gonna be out of this world. I want people to know in the back of their heads, hey, if we keep Ryan, he'll provide for us. And a high caliber survivor season is what I came to play and I'm providing to get that out of the people I'm playing with. Number 29, speaking of Ryan fishing and Owen's mentioning of Ozzy earlier, Ryan is the real second coming of Ozzy as this man could rival Ozzy in the ocean in his prime. One, two, three, sorry. Hey, you good? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's pretty. 10, 11, 12. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's still more. 13, wow. 14, 15. What about Azza? 16, yeah. Gee! Good God. 17. What do you guys think 18, about getting a little bit more? You up well? I mean, Can I we're... get 20? Come on, baby, get it, get it. 20? 21! All right, dude. Nice. Damn. 21 fit! Number 30. Thank Jeff, the stupid hourglass didn't return for Survivor 43. It really should have been a one and done after 41, but I bring this up only because in this interview with Jeff, he reflects on the hourglass decision and how he wrongfully thinks it tanked Danny's game from 41. Change history twist we did. Yeah. There was a guy, Danny, on that season who I think could have won the game. I mean, he's just a, you know, he's a really smart, yeah. super clever, very likable and physical. He could win. Mm -hmm. But he got so mad for 48 hours that he took his eyes off the prize. And I still think back and think, did that just, did that little course correction yeah. hurt you? Yeah. Versus 
Dude, it is. Mm -hmm. You can be mad at me later. Yeah, yeah. But don't mess up your game because yeah, you're yeah. mad. Number 31. Remember the James Instagram video which showed who he was going to vote for at Final 3? Well, well, well. Here is Ryan's Instagram video which makes his vote obvious as well. There are quite a bit of players I would stay friends with after the game. Um, Gabler is definitely one of them. I've been invited to go on fishing trips. He's already got stuff planned out um, in his head for us to go and do things and it's going to be wonderful. He's a wonderful human being. He, helps many people and he was very, though he voted me out, I could still see his modesty, his integrity, and it really meant a lot to me. Number 32, when it was revealed that Jesse had the idol and not Dwight, my mind was blown. He was even asked about this in his post game interviews and Dwight, what a mastermind. It was an idol, now it's just a trinket. Now it's it's off, uh, yeah. uh, maybe they strip it off the ghost island, who knows. Uh, but, who knows where it is. Right, so just for verification, that idol is Dunzo, correct? Janine, yeah, she does not have that idol. That's a shame. That's a shame. It's the price you pay for, you know, sending a a good player uh, off pre-jury. Number 33. Cassie claimed post-game that if she had played the same exact game but was a man, she would have won the season. I'll let you all be the judge of this, but here's what Carla had to say in response to that. I think it's hard because... I think I played a game that was pretty out there. So I don't know, I think it's hard because all three of them played very under the radar games. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame it on gender. They all played very similar games. Um, all it took was like one or two moves to make that differentiation, to, to, to make that winning move. Number 34, if you played Survivor, would you kill a snake or is that against your moral code? Well, the question came up in this secret scene and I'll let you know, I am pro killing the snake. Do you see it on the branch? That's a big snake. Cause I was gonna get That's wood and then I look over I and I'm like- I just cut its head off. No. Why, you wanna eat the snake? Oh. For real? Yeah. Here comes Ryan with his machete, ready to like kill it. Would you guys be, would you guys eat it? Uh. I feel bad. I mean, I would just feel bad if it got one of us. But at the same time, I was like, no, why are you gonna eat this? Like, it's not disturbing. And he's like, yo, what if it gets you? Okay, hero, like, calm down. I'm not gonna die by snake. Number 35. In that same interview with Jeff, he does shine a light on some of how the show works, like the rules they have for players in confessionals. Uh, the one thing we ask them, you have to be honest with us in your interview. You cannot lie, because really? that's how we tell the story. Right. We don't have people lying. Occasionally, like once every five years, there'll be a player in their first interview saying, so you promise you're not going to use this information and then go tell Billy what right. Dom said. And we're right. like, no, our, our entire foundation is right. built on this trust. Number 36. Back in the day, Survivor cared a lot about tribes and the divisions between them. It's probably why All-Stars waited until episode 11 to merge, which was a massive mistake. Get these all-stars interacting, Survivor. Well, that attitude has shifted to the point where I now ask, why not do a one world season with no tribes? You know, like it used to be red tribe versus blue tribe. Yeah. And we might call it something, you know, uh, brains, brawn, and beauty, whatever it is. For me now, even though there are still tribes, I see this as an individual pursuit because mm -hmm. that's where I'm at in my life. Right. But all I'm seeing is 18 people, 17 people, 16 people, mm -hmm. 15 people. Mm -hmm. So my spiritual place in the world is, why are you here? Right, right. What do you want from this? Yeah, yeah. Is it really just a million dollars? Yeah. Probably not. No. Number 37. The blue tribe dominated the pre-merge until the other two tribes had to literally team up to stop them. But why was Blue so good? Did they have some sort of secret? I really have a passion in personal training. And for me, being able to take care of your body and push yourself to your limits, it has its own personal goals, both physically and psychologically. Good <laughs> job. There you go, Jay. I really think it's gonna translate over to Survivor and being able to create alliances and being able to have a pool people's feelings but for me it's really about the, helping them have a better quality of life so they can have a longer and happier quantity of life. number 38 i really liked neca this season and it's a shame she was voted off so early especially when she's out there helping everyone look so dang good so this is what i typically just do to my hair and wear it yeah i do it myself so because the hair is naturally curly yeah. it locks so i'm gonna try and put it as tight as possible I appreciate you letting me do this. Oh, <laughs> right. We're done. 
You're done. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're done. Number 39. In the actual season, the merge just kind of happens. No hype leading into it, but here in the secret scene is us actually seeing Baka get the merge note. Trevor! Let's go get oh Ellie. Let's oh my god, let's go get Ellie. Ellie. It's so early for Tremio. Ah! What? Read it! Read it! Number 40. When Ryan received a vote at Tribal, he was confused. Was it Cassidy? Was it James? Was it Owen? Who voted for him? As you watch this secret scene, just know it was Cassidy. So you voted Janine? Yes. Like you swear. I swear to God. Okay. But I didn't know who voted for Ryan. You okay? Yeah, I just want to know where that vote came from. It was, it was oh, Owen. Yeah, I think that's it was Owen. And I, I just, talked to him before. It's like, why would you do that? Because we, we, you know? we told him to. And the thing about it is. You told him to vote me. Yeah, we had to keep Janine like from doing something crazy. Ryan's definitely surprised. I mean, he's like trying to find out. He wrote his name down, so we told him that it was Owen. But the truth is, I ended up switching my vote to Ryan. Out. Number 41. I like Owen. It's just a shame he didn't do anything to convince the jury to vote for him to win. Since he clearly knew the game and he knew how to speak at Final Tribal and knew what needed to be done, unlike Cassidy. You know, I think there's no harm in practicing right now, but I don't want to give anyone fun, any funny ideas. We, we always joke a lot about, oh, they started that fire really quick. So I um, figure before everyone wakes up, just get a couple of reps in at the very least. Realistically, there is one path that I see. It, it involves taking out Carla, taking out Jesse. Carla has played a great game. Jesse has played a silent but very deadly game. So taking them both out is critical. And to do that, one needs to go tonight at the final five. I need to take one of them out of fire making. Number 42. In Carla's post-game interview, she reveals we didn't see another back search for an idol that happened on her tribe. The first cracks were around the idol, um, the suspicions of people having an idol. And so the girls and, and James, we all were like, Gio must have the idol because Gio and Ryan have been looking for the idol forever. Um, and then little do they know that, that in between people are figuring that out, I have it, right? And so I'm like, let me keep this paranoia going. Um, there's a moment where Lindsay goes through Gio's bag and Cass and I didn't want to go oh. look through her bag or look through Gio's bag, but then we were like, let's just do it anyway. And so there's this great scene where I'm like, they find this map and I'm telling them, oh my God, this is the map for the idol on the camp. And so I'm playing both sides. I do like a gym helper and I look at the camera and I'm like laughing. Number 43, I would play this song for you if I could, but <laughs> copyright is really strict. I will link it in the description though. Did you know Billie Eilish included Survivor in a recent song of hers? I'm not really a fan of her music, but it is worth a one-time listen. So which secret surprised you the most? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.